What is up, guys? Welcome back to the Lightspeed Lawn Care Marketing Podcast. I am your host, as always, Cody Owen, sitting down with my excellent co-host, Robert Chapa. And today we are going to be talking about something that we have a little skin in the game on. Just to be completely transparent and upfront, we're going to be talking about whether you should work with an agency or have an in-house marketing team for your lawn care business. Obviously, you know, we kind of work for a place that is an agency that provides marketing services for lawn care companies and landscaping companies. So we've got some skin in the game here, but we hopefully will give you some good thoughts, you know, pro and con on both sides. So let's, Robert, let's jump in. Yeah. Keep your ears open, guys, because this first question we're starting with is how do you know when you need help with marketing? So Cody, like, what are the signs we're looking for when, okay, I either need to do it myself and like go full, I mean, turn the burners on, or do I need to hire an agency who's going to allow me to do my actual job? Yeah. So I think like anything in the business, when you're considering whether to keep that hat on your head or put it on somebody else's, you have to consider like, how much of my time is this taking? What is the opportunity cost of me continuing to do this? And a lot of times, you know, a lot of business owners, the trade-off is great for them. They would much rather hire a like lower skill, lower paid position and keep marketing on their plate. I think that there becomes a point where it's really hard for you to be an expert at every aspect of marketing your business and that's going to make it difficult for you to continue to grow with it on your plate. So there's two considerations here. There's the get it off my plate sort of thing where, you know, you might be a pretty good generalist. You got the business up to 300 or so thousand dollars a year and you've, you've gotten there as a generalist and now you're looking to go to the next level. And so you need to hire people with, you know, more specific skills. So Robert, can you tell us some, some signs that your marketing isn't working? Because I think that's a key here is that either the, the marketing you're doing isn't getting the results you want, or it's taking too much of your time. So if you're just wanting to get it off your plate, you just need to find the right people that can do the job. But if your marketing's not working, there might be something deeper here that's a problem. So let's talk about how to know your marketing isn't working. There are a lot of signs for that, Cody. Like one of them could be, okay, let's say you... And this is something simple, but also powerful is like with Google reviews. Okay. Are you, cause with Google reviews to actually start accumulating, like, let's say you want big numbers where it looks really good when you have over a hundred. Now, when you have over a thousand, I mean, that looks tremendous. Okay. Are you, are you actually going out of your way to get those reviews? Are you hunting these people down? Cause you can be doing the best job in the world, but sometimes you see businesses and they have like two or three reviews, which I mean, is a good start, but I mean, having a lot more and how many clients are you servicing? Are you, can you get a review from every client? I mean, just about if you're really chasing that. I mean, that's just one tiny thing in yeah. marketing. Another is, are people finding you online? And you can, you always want to ask your clients, okay, where did you find us? And they're not going to always know exactly where they found you. Maybe they called you because they saw a, a sign, but if they would have saw a Facebook ad, Maybe that, you know, put it in their mind, hey, this lawn care company exists. And then they finally take the action when they see the sign. But if you don't yeah. even have those avenues for them to see you, then you're just hoping that they see that sign or hoping that somebody tells them about you. Yeah, word of mouth is awesome, but it's like, it's not going to carry you past like, it's just not going to carry you that far. Yeah. Big things to to look for in your marketing isn't working anymore is your your cost for customer acquisition is suddenly going way up. Yeah. There's probably something that's changed that that you maybe didn't hear about because, you know, you're a business owner, you're busy, you're working on the business and I know that you know the latest equipment that's coming out from Skag or whatever, <laughs> but marketing isn't your main thing. So when there's a change to the way that Google Ads operate or there is a compliance change that Facebook's making. You may not know why things dropped off the cliff. And you may even think that it's something you did wrong when like, you know, the adpocalypse happened with Facebook going to war with Apple. Yeah, man. I'm sure that there were people who'd been running their own ads that thought something had gone wrong when really, if you had a good, robust retargeting campaign, 
that was relying on being able to identify people who hit your website. Um, and Apple like blew that up overnight. There was nothing wrong with your campaign. It was just the, the market had changed and you needed to adapt to it, but you didn't know about it. So look for suddenly ballooning costs, which means you have to be tracking them. If you're not tracking this stuff, you can't know something went wrong. You can't know it's broken until it just becomes, well, we're getting less customers in the door is when you start to like know there's a problem. If you're tracking your channels independently, it's going to make it easier for you to know like the problems coming from Facebook or the problems coming from Google ads, or maybe all our signs got pulled up by an HOA. And so we're not getting any calls from signs anymore. What happened? So you want to be tracking all of those channels and reviewing that information regularly so that you can identify a problem. So I think we've kind of already talked about like how big your business should be when you're thinking about bringing on a marketing agency. I think when you are, you know, going from 300 to half a million, you have to start thinking about, okay, is this worth my time? Can I dedicate enough time to this to be an expert at the aspects of it that matter to the business right now? And if the answer to those questions is no, then you have to start considering either bringing in an agency or bringing in someone in-house. And, you know, we're not going to say on this show that having an in-house marketing team is a bad idea. I think it's a fantastic idea. I have friends in the industry that, that have done this, even though we're, we're friends, right? They believe that it's going to work out better for their business in the long run to hire experts who know their brand intimately because they work there. Um, so why, you know, Robert, let's put the, let's put this to you. Why, why do you think people hire us? You have a group of, well, Cody, how many, how many years do you have in marketing, Cody? Like eight in, in just in lawn um, care. What is that? Eight? Just in, yeah. Eight, Patrick. Yeah, about eight years. Our other, our other guy, Patrick, has what? Even longer. Even longer, dude. He had already been there a couple years when I got there. Yeah. Yeah. Like 10 years. And then me from you guys, like when I've been with you for three years. So just having that amount of knowledge. I mean, I even think about it from the perspective of like, let's say I worked for a company like a lawn care company, and they hired just me as to be like their marketing, Cody, I think, well, there are a lot of situations where I run into where I hit you up or I hit Patrick up and say, hey, like, I didn't know about this new tool that came out or what do you think about this ad copy? Something as simple as that. And Patrick will spice that thing up. So it's like having these different hands to touch it, different experience levels to people who've worked in this industry for I mean, we're talking like 20 years of experience. I just, yeah, 20 years of experience. Yeah. And, you know, we've tested so many different markets all across the U.S. and in Canada. So we know what works. We know why it works. We know how to replicate it. But we're also staying on the edge, seeing, okay, what's the next move we got to make? Because like you said, Cody, with, with like ChatGPT coming out, with SEO changing, you can't do the same the same tricks are not going to work year after year. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, we have all of that experience and it also gives us a good baseline to work from, you know, if you bring someone in who is a, you know, they have experience doing local SEO or they have experience doing Facebook ads, they're still going to have to learn the industry. Yeah. Right. I said this in our YouTube video this week that like when you hire us, you don't have to teach me and Robert what aeration is. We we know what aeration is. We know what overseeding is. We know your industry. So we're also not going to write ad copy that makes you look like a moron. And, you know, through no fault of their own, someone who doesn't know the industry as well could definitely pop in and, and say something that's like absolutely brain dead because they just didn't know any better. And, you know, we've already made those mistakes. So you don't <laughs> yeah. have to... You don't have to correct those usually. Big advantages of hiring an agency like us, but not necessarily us, over building an in-house team is kind of fresh outside perspectives. We're trying new things. We're actually like in the middle of a pretty big transition for Lightspeed in general. Uh, some of the things that we want to be able to help customers with. And so we're, we're constantly looking for that kind of thing because we have to earn our keep. There's no like coasting for True, an outside agency. So we're having to justify why you should stay on with us month after month versus 
you know, you'd probably be a little more hesitant to fire an underperforming employee. You're going to give them chances to improve and like, come on, you can, you know, like get it together versus like when there's no consequence to firing your marketing agency, you can even like, you can say, Hey, don't work here for three months and come back. And we'll be like, Oh yeah, that's great. So, you know, it's a completely different relationship, but then also you're going to get instant access to a team of experts versus You know, usually a company that's looking to hire, you know, if we're doing apples to apples here, what you pay a marketing agency versus what you're paying for one employee who's qualified to be like the director of marketing at a 300,000 to half a million dollar lawn care and landscaping business, that person is going to command a decent salary. And if you're able to get away with paying them, you know, peanuts, you're going to get peanuts. Like, this person is going to know what they're worth or they're severely underqualified. And so they're going to come in and try to do everything, but they're not going to even know to do some things because they don't have any, they don't have any real experience here. So you need this person. If you're going to hire a marketing team, you probably want two or three people, honestly. And so like that cost is going to ramp unless you're able to like bring someone from maybe the office staff is going to get kind of brought up into this position. That is how I ended up in marketing was I answered the phones at service autopilot. And then I got to start writing blog posts and then I took some classes to get some certifications and I like leveled up my responsibility until I was fully in the the marketing team. So you might be able to do that kind of like graduated system with someone where you've got a lot on your plate and then you're handing off some like easily taught tasks to someone from the office team. And you can kind of bring people in that way. I think that's a good way to build a team if you're going to do it. It's just going to be a lot of work versus having built-in experts like Robert Patrick and I, where, you know, when I have a question about, you know, like some SEO stuff that we're working on right now, I know Patrick has experience with a lot of that in the past at a, a pretty high level. And so I go to him and I'm like, hey, man, what do you think about this? Does this make sense? And Robert can come to me with uh, design questions. We kind of, you know, go back and forth on our thumbnail designs all the time and, and designs for people's ads. Like, well, I think it would look better if we moved this and you get that collaborative thing that's going to be harder to get when, you know, everyone's trying to learn their job versus, you know, we're constantly learning, but we have the basics down already. So really important if you're hiring an agency that you try to get away from like generalist type agencies. This is probably like a local business in your market that's hounding you to hire them. And it's going to be a lot better for you if you're working with someone who knows the industry and is specifically working in, in the green industry versus people who do a little bit of everything, right? For the same reason that, you know, when you're looking to hire a guy, you might want a guy with some experience you know, it's the exact same thing where it's just like, we know the industry, you don't have to spend your time explaining to us. We kind of talked about that already. Yeah. I mean, if you, if you're a lawn care specialist, business owner, like you're not trying to fix somebody's roof. And the ads that work for that roofing company are probably not going to do as well as ads made specifically for your lawn care business. Absolutely. So your agency is going to know how to use, you know, a bunch of tools and techniques that, you know, there are things that we use that don't even, you know, our clients never hear about because it's, you know, we need to go check on something. And as long as it's, you know, we're making sure that like, does this work? You know, how does it, you know, we're testing things that the client doesn't even have to know about, but it's going to improve how their, their ads work. You know, when we go through and consider, does this field need to be on this form? Do they need this piece of information now? Are we going to reduce friction a little bit by pulling it off? You know, all of those sorts of decisions that are happening that we're staying up to date on. We've talked about this already, so I don't think we need to belabor the point there. Agencies are going to scale your growth. There's a point where you can be too small to hire an agency. And that's where like their fee is going to really dwarf your ad spend. And it would be better if you just pumped that money into your ads. I don't want guys who are solopreneurs to hear this and think like, I need to hire a marketing agency. You probably need to, you know, struggle a little bit longer and do that marketing yourself and kind of get a feel for it and, and work on it yourself so that your money is going directly into getting you new customers versus 
your money going to a company like us, but then we don't have the ad spend budget we need to get you good results. Now, when it, when it comes to scaling, so let's say we're past the, you know, solopreneur stage, we're hitting that we're over a hundred thousand we're and, we, and we're just trying to scale. We want to add more crew members. Okay. When, when I'm looking at an agency, you know, how, as the business owner, what am I looking for in the agency? How are they going to take us to that next level? An agency helps you scale because they're going to spend. So this is the best case scenario, right? There are bad agencies, just like there's bad lawn care companies. But the the goal is that they're able to spend your ad dollars more effectively. And so they're going to get you better results through their expertise. They're going to be able to tell you, like they're going to be monitoring the data so that they can tell you, hey, the the problem here is not the ad, right? People are clicking on the ad and then they're hitting the landing page and not converting. And so that's the kind of value that we bring to the table is that our only job is to analyze your funnel and make it perform as, you know, as good as we can make it perform. So that is why you want to come online with an agency is if you don't have time, you need to get it off your plate, you need experts to start coming in, you're starting to have these distinct channels and we need people to manage specific channels that they're good at. So that is why you would want to come on with Lightspeed. And if you are not already a client, we are talking to people before the end of April. So if you're listening to this before the end of April, 2023, we have an offer going right now that you can see on our website. It's linked up top, says Spring Offer 23. But the, the headline is that we're doing 40% off your first three months so that we can prove to you what we can do for your business. So if you know that you need to hire an agency to take marketing off your plate, maybe spring marketing efforts that you've done in-house have not been exactly what you're looking for so far this year, it is not too late to revamp those things. We've got everything locked and loaded. That's a big benefit to coming online with Lightspeed is we know the industry already. We've got stuff ready to go that we can pull your organic images into and we're ready to rock and roll. We can have ads live within days versus if you're like, oh, we have to revamp our whole strategy. That might take you a couple weeks of being able to work on it a few hours a day versus we're locked and loaded, ready to go. So if you need a... If you need an agency to redo your marketing, get leads coming in the door, get the phone ringing, please reach out to us, lightspeedsocialagency.com. We will get you on the right track to scale your business. Going on the other side of the table here, Cody, when should we hire an in-house marketer? Is this like something that we're looking revenue wise? Like, let's say I'm just throwing numbers out there. If we, after breaking 1 million, is that when we want to go in-house or is it when we feel like as a business owner, okay, I have an idea of the results to expect. I, you know, I understand marketing at a somewhat deeper level. Uh, what are we looking for? Like, what are the kind of the, if we're going to go in-house, not that in-house is always the goal. It just depends where you are, you know, what you yeah. want to do with your business. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's two different paths, right? So at the point that you're considering hiring an agency, you know, you could bring someone in, train them up, maybe bring someone over from the office and hire an expert in a specific thing that you want them to work on and, and develop the team, right? So there are kind of two strategies here. There's developing your own team or there's buying a ready-made team. And it just depends on how fast you want things to move. If you want to, you know, slow and steady grow, that's great. And developing your own team is a great way to do that and to keep all of your assets in-house is awesome. But if you're wanting to grow more quickly and immediately, it is probably a better option for you to hire a team. And what Robert was alluding to there was the idea that, you know, eventually those paths can converge, right? And you can be at a point where you're like, okay, we've been working with an agency for a long time. We have good standards for our numbers. Maybe we're going to keep them on to do a few things as we're building up the team. And, and then we're going to bring it back in-house. That is totally a thing you can do. I think it makes sense if you're operating multiple locations or, you know, you've scaled really, really big where it's just like, we'd like to have people that we can lean on full time to handle these things for us versus someone who's working on multiple clients. But it's just like, it's all a matter of perspective and how you want to grow the business. But if you're looking for somebody, hey, Cody, the spring offer 23, end of the month, 
So go to lightspeedsocialagency.com. We can get you online and growing this year. It's not too late. So so reach out. We would love to to have you come in and grow your business. Anything else you want to leave them with, Cody, before I sign wow. us out? Oh, What's oh no, Robert. This is sorry. I have to have an HR conversation right now. I'm sorry, man. I teed you up to say your catchphrase, the catchphrase <laughs> that you wrote for the podcast. I teed you up 1,000%. That was a juicy, slow pitch right over the plate. And then you were like, you want to say anything else, man? <laughs> I dropped that one. I got him. Hey, sign off for us, man. Grow your agency. Wow. I missed it. I wow. missed <laughs> I think that should stay in. What did we do to him? We broke him. Oh, my God. That was sloppy. Okay. I'm sweating. Okay. Grow your business at light speed. We'll see you next week.